I'm Josh with Wapaka Community Media, and we are back with another update after a couple weeks off. We've got Aaron Jensen from the city of Wapaka and Ron Sari from the school district of Wapaka. Hello, guys. Hello, Josh. Hey, Josh. Um, so we'll start out with uh, some visible news and some other news. Uh, anyone that's been to Swan Park noticed that uh, nice new splash pad and playground out there, and that new amenity to our park was something that was significantly paid for by grants and fundraising and now that that project's complete, the city and the park system is looking at uh, what's next. Uh, and uh, the next project is upgrades to Lakeman Field. Some of those are to enhance it. Some of those are to improve what are becoming safety hazards. And um, there's a fundraising process underway for Lakeman. Aaron? There is. And I'm going to go off track just really quickly before I get to Lakeman because you reminded me. Um, speaking of Splash Pad and Swan Park and Playground, that has been awesome. Super well received. Uh, so thank you for all the contributors to that. But I want to thank all the contributors to Swan Park in general over the last 20 years. This last weekend, we had a tournament where we had uh, close to 40 teams, uh, Little League tournament, 8U, 9U, 10U. Um, and I was able to be out there most of the weekend and just hearing other people come in from places like Winniconne and Kakana and Plover and all of these places. And they just are like in awe of our facility they absolutely they're like this is incredible like one guy's like this is the softest grass i've ever been on this is amazing so i sometimes when you have something around for 20 years you kind of see all the imperfections of it uh, uh, but it's just great to be reminded of that perspective and how lucky we are uh, to have a facility like swan park uh, and also thanks to our parks crew for keeping it the way that it is and keeping it to where everyone feels that way but then getting to lakeman field uh, yeah, so th they've actually been very, very successful in a short amount of time so far. So they have over $60,000 committed towards the fundraising for the lights at Lakeman Field. Just as a reminder, those field uh, lights are on poles that I think were used, the old utility poles. They were used in 1971, I believe, and uh, they're still standing. Uh, but we're trying to replace those from a safety standpoint and just the the, the standard of lighting uh it just probably does not meet well i know it does not meet standards uh required per little league baseball amateur baseball things like that and just in the last couple of weeks josh we actually had lights uh, some capacitors went out and uh, they went to about 50 percent power if not less than that so we're repairing them before we're replacing them and it's just a sign that those things need to be done so thank you to all who have committed so far to helping upgrade those lights at lakeman field and uh, thank you to uh, the Parks and Rec Department for working through that. And I believe I saw online the total amount they're looking to fundraise is about, I think, two fifty to 300000 I think, in that range. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, that sounds about right, Josh. And I know yeah. the city's, city's committed to a portion of uh, the total cost is through capital funding, and it's the fundraising to close the gap for this project. That's correct, yep. We'll jump over to Ron. Uh, some different exciting athletic grenade late news to talk about. The first one is you've got a new athletic director on board. He just started uh, early July. Let's, uh, let's hear about him. Yeah, Rob Scherer is his name. And uh, he, he's married with children. They moved here. Uh, he started July 5th. And believe it or not, uh, they built a house over by the airport in that subdivision. And they're already moved into the house. And uh, so he's got a seventh grader and then a couple of younger ones, too. So the seventh grader will be going to our middle school. The younger ones will be coming up through the, the system. And uh, it, it was ju it's just a great find because he, he's, a, he's a good man. He's a, a experienced with uh, being previous experience as an assistant principal and an athletic director. Lots of coaching experience. And we are very confident he's going to do a terrific job for us. That's awesome. And I heard, Ron, that he's like, he moved into the city. He's got kids in the district, like you mentioned. He's an employee for you. That sounds like a lot of check boxes. That's awesome. Yeah, moving into the city for you and increasing your tax base, it's what we're always talking about. <laughs> right. Win -win. That's right. And we've got some uh, other people and teams to take a look at to recognize from your athletic department. Rocky Mondello um, got to do a significant coaching gig. Yeah, a lot of people know Rocky. He is our baseball, our varsity baseball coach. He's a teacher at the middle school, terrific person, great teacher, a good coach. And he was selected by his peers. The, the Wisconsin Baseball Association 
coaching association selected Rocky to uh, coach the All-Star game for the North. And uh, he was honored. And that took place July 1st, I believe, June 30th and July 1st and uh, in Oshkosh. His team didn't win, but they uh, they did have uh, – they went one and two. And then the, the final game, there were nine innings, and they, they lost eight to six. But – Rocky reported he had a great time. The athletes had a great time. He was honored. And he even said, he, you know, he's an accomplished athlete himself. He even said that this is probably, that was the highlight of anything having to do with athletics for him in his life. So it was, we're, we're happy for him. And then we got to congratulate your varsity volleyball team. It's one thing to be recognized from winning or hitting playoffs, but they got a different sort of uh, recognition. Yeah, the, the girls varsity uh, was selected. Uh, by the the Varsity Coaching Association uh, as to be on the all-academic team for last year, 22-23. And that's quite the honor, and it's because of the great point average that those girls had, being good athletes and good scholars. They had a a cumulative GPA of 3.7. And that's partly due to them and their parents, the athletes and their parents, but also their coach. Liz Kinnear is the coach of the volleyball team, she does a nice job with these girls and to keep those girls uh, motivated academically as well is is pretty neat and special. So we're happy that they are getting that recognition and it helps to put us as a community back on the map. Very cool, congratulations to them. Um, We'll jump over, you know, the last time we did an update, we were talking about a survey for um, people in the area, whether it's residents, businesses, visitors that they could take to help the city provide the the city some feedback and that feedback's been received. It's been reviewed by staff and elected officials. Tell us a little bit about that process, Aaron. Yeah, um, and and you're absolutely right. So about a month that survey was out or a little longer, I think it was put out in the beginning of June. Uh, We just recently reviewed it as a part of our strategic plan update retreat last week. Uh, We kind of reported out on all of our progress since the the strategic plan was uh, put in place and early 2020. Um, and then we are refreshing it to meet our needs as of now. And we took that public input. We reviewed all of that survey data. City Council and Department heads have had a great conversation across two days, uh, last Tuesday and Wednesday for about three hours each day. Uh, and then we wrapped up at the end of Council last night with uh, just some report outs on initial summaries of the 2022 audit. And then uh, the shared revenue impact. Um, So if you want to get any information on that, I encourage you to watch the video of last night's meeting. Um, But it was great. Uh, It's just a great conversation between elected officials and our leadership teams and leadership positions from a staff standpoint in the city and uh, feel good about bringing forward a revised plan within the next month and hopefully adopting that revised plan soon. And then you kind of prep the audit and uh, some items with revenue. The city's getting ready to get into the budget process for next year. We are. Uh, so our budget workshop schedule we laid out last night as well. Uh, our first one's going to be September 5th. That's going to be our capital improvement workshop. Talk about all of our big projects that usually we uh, will have to we borrow for, uh, staying within the parameters that we've set. And then uh, September 19th, we'll talk personnel. October 3rd will be TIF and Transit. October 17th, our first look at the overall draft budget. And then November 7th, we kind of have an off night, but we will meet on the budget if we need to. We kind of keep that as a placeholder in case we need to meet on something specific. And then November 21st, we're looking at adopting the budget. And then if we we do have a week or two after that, if we need to, um, to iron, iron out some final things, but right now, November 21st is that final adoption date for the 2024 city budget. Very good. Well, Ron, Aaron, appreciate the time, and we will talk again soon. Perfect. Thank you.